Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. So in the last video, we saw how dithering saved one of my pictures. I mean, it saved it until I can get new flats. But I also want to go into how I went into processing this actual picture because it is processing for uh, narrowband imaging using a one-shot color camera, uh, the ASI 533MC Pro in my case, but it's the same for pretty much any camera. And when you're doing the processing after you've used a narrowband filter, like a multi-band filter, whether it is like the Optolong L Extreme, like I use, the L Enhance, uh, the ZW Duo Band, the uh, IDAS, whatever it's called, um, or the OPT Radian Quad Super Ultra Pro, whatever. Uh, yeah, I know all of those products. Uh, they're awesome products. Uh, they go around a lot of the shortcomings of um, one-shot color cameras in light, polluted area, in light polluted areas, like here in Tokyo, or actually, I'm, uh, I'm roughly 500 meters away from Tokyo, full disclosure. But anyway, um, I want to go into how I process this picture of the North American nebula. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we come back to the original step where um, I want to simply go into my screen transfer function and unlink and stretch. And we can see we have a kind of like greenish and orangish kind of uh, result. And I'll also go ahead and just apply quickly a dynamic crop on this, uh, just like we did in the previous uh, video. And here it is, it looks like a dynamic crop that, that really takes advantage of everything that's available in the picture. I'll just apply it to the main image. So now we have our um, stacking artifacts completely gone. Cool. So what else can we uh, now do? So this has been done with an unlinked screen transfer function, meaning it's just adjusted the colors. There's another way we could achieve that, but you'll see the result will be very different. So if I make a copy of that image and now I will just like show how it is when I, I link the channels, the green channel is overwhelming. Um, and what I, we can do as well is an, auto an automatic background extraction. And I'll just, uh, we can see that the green is, is mostly flat. So when you're doing an automatic background extraction, uh, you want to adapt the um, function degree that you use to the complexity of the background that you have on, my, on your picture. For me, it's flat. There might be a small gradient, like one directional gradient, um, that might be in there. So I, I'll want to put like function degree, maybe one, let's do one. And we're going to do a subtraction. I'm just going to replace the target image and discard the background model. Um, and like basically the more wavy your background is, the higher function degree you want to have. And feel free to experiment with that because in some instances I've seen automatic, automatic background extractor being much better than dynamic background extractor. Okay, so now we've done this and now we do another linked um, stretch. And you can see that the result is different. We can see that we're going to go towards like the pink red kind of colors, uh, which you can see in so many of my pictures as well. And the the blue is gone. And I am not sure whether it will be possible to, you know, get back to that blue color. So if I were to go to, uh, so I know we haven't stretched this yet, but if I were to go to my, uh, uh, to my curves, even before stretching and try to play with the, the hue and this kind of stuff, like you can see, like how I, I, it feels like it's going to be difficult to get back to blue because it really seems to, to affect everything. So we could play a bit with the the colors, but like I, I, my image is now much more one tone than it used to be. It becomes much more difficult to really like play with it. And you know, I can and I can play with the uh, the chroma. Uh, the, uh, the the saturation and, and still change that one tone image, but we're losing something, which is why I will intentionally not do any background extraction with the image. And so I'm going to take my unlinked uh, screen transfer function and apply it as a histogram. But while we're linear, I still want to quickly go inside the easy processing suite. I'm going to do a quick denoise of the image. So I just uh, select my image. I we'll try keeping everything at default. You can 
um, always with this uh, se select a mask, run this on a mask with uh, evaluate easy denoise uh, run. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll just run it immediately because I'm feeling adventurous. Okay, it took a bit of time, but here we are. We have uh, done some uh, noise reduction in here and we are ready to go to the next stage. I don't like having all those windows open, so let's get rid of them quickly. Yes, no, thank you. Here we are. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to do another stretch just to see how deep it can go with the new noise uh, reduction. And uh, yeah, it looks, uh, looks not bad at all. So I'm not going to separate the channels or do anything complicated like that. I'm just going to go and grab my histogram transformation because it's simple and easy. And we are going to just grab the triangle on the screen transfer function that has been uh, um, used on this image, drag it to the, to the bar of the histogram transformation, then grab the histogram transformation into uh, this uh, image. The usual straightforwardness of PixInsight, welcome. Uh, so here we are, and now I'm gonna remove the screen transfer function. And this image is now non-linear. I could have done some more stuff in the linear stage, um, like deconvolution, that kind of stuff, but meh, I feel a bit, uh, a bit too lazy. So now we can uh, work on this. Now, one of the things uh, with here is I'll probably want to bump up the luminosity, I'll want to bump up the saturation, and um, I don't want to affect the stars. Now the stars, they're a bit green right now. So what we're gonna do is we, we are going to first do a quick bit of SCNR for the green color. So here we have green SCNR. Let's remove that green. I hope it wasn't too aggressive. Let's, let's actually do 0 0.9, just so that I can feel psychologically better for not killing all of the green. Here we are. And now we have blue and red. It's just I don't want to emphasize, to overemphasize all of my stars too much. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go into uh, Starnet. And in Starnet, you need to make sure if you haven't used it before that you go into the settings here and choose the uh, weights files that are actually already included in your library. Um, why this is not set by default is to me a mystery, uh, but you know, PixInsight likes to be mysterious. It keeps us on our toes. So now that it's set, we're able to use StarNet and I'm gonna set, create a star mask. And um, I now have a pretty powerful GPU, um, a 3080 Ti, uh, but I haven't set up StarNet to use the GPU yet. So it's gonna take a bit of time. Uh, although my, my CPU is um, a Ryzen 5800X, which is still somewhat fast. So let's wait until this is done. Okay, and here we are. And what's been, what's happened is that now I have the image without stars on the left, and I've also created a star mask that has the stars with their color still intact. So I'm just gonna forget about this star mask for the time being. Uh, I might use it later on. So I'm gonna make, not a copy, I am going to make a black and white, white copy. So if I want to use it as an actual mask, I can but I'm just gonna put that in icon and just forget that this exists. What we're going to do next is I'm just gonna play with curves because as always, I like to play with curves. And um, this time, so I reset everything, I go to the RGBK curve because we want to kind of enhance both the contrast and the luminosity of that. I forgot to open the preview and we're gonna do something yeah, like this. So I'm, I'm really doing an S curve for contrast enhancement. So we have, oops, I don't want to add as many points as that. So we have like very, like the, the, the bright areas of the nebula are like kind of popping out of the picture while the darker areas, like those dark streaks there in the nebula are, are darker, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> and we'll be able to, to make them even darker later on using the, um, what's the name, the Dark Structures Enhance script. So anyway, let's, let's apply that for now so that we have like a brighter, more contrasty image, which looks really nice like that. And now the next step really depends on how you like your images. Do you like them to pop out or do you like them to be like, let's say smoother um, with less, fewer colors? So that really depends. Uh, on what your next step will be in terms of 
uh, playing with the color saturation. And before I play with the color saturation, first I am going to make a luminance uh, copy of this. And I am going to do... No, I'm going to leave it like that and apply it by dragging and dropping here as a mask to the main image. We don't want everything to be red, so I am going to click here and say don't show the mask. And now we're going to go inside our color saturation because I will want to enhance especially the red and the blue. Although, come to think of it, only the, there's only red and blue in this image. So let's try first with the curves, just saturation, put this uh, on, and we can get some, this is pretty neat result. I don't want to go like too crazy on the curve directly. So I am going to, um, to first do a, a first pass like this. And you know, this could be very accept acceptable to a lot of people. But I feel that I want to saturate my blue more than I want to saturate my red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go inside the uh, color saturation tool here, and we're gonna increase the range because one range will typically not be enough for an image that has a masked mask applied on it. We're going to add points to the curve here and I want to see where my blue is. You can see my blue is exactly here. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a spike in the blue here and I want to see where my this orange thing here is and it is exactly here. So let's do something like this and make sure that we don't include too much of the color like that and we put the orange less high than the blue. And even then the orange seems to be a bit too emphasized. I really want to emphasize the blue mostly rather than, than play too much with the orange. So with that, I'm doing exactly that. So we get a, a much better blue image, although you can see we're actually losing some details within the image. Some of the um, like kind of reddish here or orangish here gets lost a little bit, which, you know, it's kind of like a war between what you like what you want to achieve so it's kind of up to you i feel like i'm uh, i'm probably doing too much saturation there and i'm going to keep it like that i'm i'm keeping all of my uh blue it's quite punchy but at the same time i i those like dust lanes here are still on that image which i find pretty neat so i'm just going to apply that and now we're really getting uh, somewhere. Now the image is noisy. This is just a few hours in a Bortle 8, uh, Bortle 9 zone. Um, so it's obviously not great, but we're getting somewhere. So what we could do next is uh, play with the um, local histogram equalization and keep it in at a fairly low value and try to, uh, to apply that directly to the image, see what we will get. And we can do a before, after. There's a slight incre increase in local contrast that I don't mind. And I don't want to go ham on this because it can be really like a bit too punchy for my, uh, for my tastes. And then I am going to remove my mask and we're gonna go inside the scripts. We're gonna go inside the utilities and we're gonna do dark structures and hence. I'm gonna keep, maybe I don't want to increase too much the dark, stru dark structures, but we're just going to try to apply that to the image and see what we get uh, in the end. So the black is definitely um, darker and there is definitely more contrast than we have. And I don't think we went overboard with that. Uh, so it, it gives us a good idea of the, uh, the lanes in there. I probably want to increase the, the overall luminosity of the image again. And um, yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to go inside the curves transformation, RGBK, and just increase, no, no. Mm, difficult, maybe something like that. Very, very small change. I feel like I may want to also shift this pinkish color towards red using hue, we could try that, but it's probably not gonna be super successful. Hue, playing with hue is always a bit of a, of a gamble in PixInsight. So I can click here to see before, after. Yeah, maybe, why not? 
So we're getting there. I feel like the image is not too aggressive. It's not too like in your face. And we're getting good like uh, H-alpha, oxygen-3, oxygen-3 type of colors, which is what we expect from uh, a filter like the L-Extreme. So now I'm going to go towards the final steps of this image, which will be simply adding back the stars. And adding back the stars are, is very easy because I have my original star mask. So I can just go inside uh, Pixel Math and I'm gonna go and say that I want to add to my target, I want to add the image called star mask. Star mask, no, with an underscore, here we are. And I'm just gonna apply that to here and the stars are back. And the stars don't look too bad. I'll probably want to still de-emphasize them a little bit. So we're gonna go to the um, easy star reduction, okay. We're going to use the, la the star mask that I already have. Medium, nya, 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 nya. Okay, never mind. <sighs> We're going to create this, the star mask from scratch. Ah, wait, no. Uh, yeah, I made a mistake. I, want, I, want, I, I selected my picture. Now we're going to select the star mask with the luminance. And maybe I'm going to do this method here and see what we get. It's going to take a little bit of time. And let's see, uh, let's see what we get like before, after. The, the difference is not so enormous, but I like that it did de-emphasize like the bigger stars. And I kind of like this picture as it is. This is, this is a pretty neat picture. And this is basically the end of this video. So we've seen like, I like this way of processing. I don't think I've really managed before to get that blue color in my images with the L-Extreme filter. So I'm really looking forward to taking more images and playing with that more. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, feel free to go down below, click the subscribe button if you like astrophotography and um, you know, leave a comment if you have comments or suggestions about the processing method that I'm using there, always welcome. So. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars, and I'll see you next time.